What is good YouTube and in this video I'll just go straight to the point. My goal in this video is to upgrade your 5 man offense like I've been doing on your stick skills. In this video I'm going to show you the different tools that you can use to upgrade your freelance sets and give you some additional options to go out of the box in how you create your 5 man offense going beyond what the freelance tells you to do. So in this video we're going to focus on the Warriors, specifically the Warriors Freelance and the 21 Delay Freelance. And if you like this video, maybe you want a deep dive on those freelance sets, let me know in the comments section below. So by the end of this video, hopefully I'll have you executing Warriors-like options which are out of the box and can unleash that creativity on the 5-man sets. Alright, but first let's choose your freelance and you do this by going to the offensive settings and then going to the freelance option. So right here, I'm going to set the 21 delay freelance. It's a 5 out set with pistol action and 5 out delay actions as my primary freelance with the death lineup. And then hit the warriors freelance as my second freelance, which I'll show you later on the differences in these options. Now if you want to specifically run your freelance as your primary offensive option, tap right on the d-pad, then press X to access your game plan, and then tap right on the d-pad again, and then R1 to select your freelance. So freelance offenses determine your spacing and provide you with sets of actions you can choose out of your freelance. So in this case, the 21 delay set has some action between the point guard and the wing, it gives you flare screens, down screen options. Now as you can see here, once the freelance dies, your players will just rearrange themselves in order to reset on the freelance. Those are the rules that govern freelance offense. So this is an example right here of the 21 delay freelance and see the options that you have out of the standard freelance. As you can see right here after that pass, Jordan Poole will cut, a flare screen for Jamichael Green, and then a pin down option for Clay Thompson for a wide open 3. And these are all options out of just following the freelance. As you can see the play diagram right there, I stay pretty faithful to the play diagram. As you can see right here, another flare screen for Clay gives us a wide open 3. And you have these options out of the standard freelance. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to be creative and color outside of the lines of a set freelance, giving you more, more options based on the tools that I'll be showing you in this video. Now shifting over to the Warriors freelance, as you can see right here, we improvise. Look at how we convert that down screen for Jordan Poole into a screen the screener action, which gives us a slip option into a wide open alley. -oop. We can also execute a handoff action out of that down screen to give us some Chicago action to get Steph a wide open 3. Alright, our first tool to modify our freelance is our manual pick and roll control which is done by holding L1. This will request a screen from your 4 or your 5, tapping R1 will choose between a roll or a fade, and then pressing L3 will switch the direction of the screen. Now while holding L1, if you tap L1 again, this will result in a slip which means you abandon the screen and then cut towards the basket out of that roll option. As you can see right here, tapping L1 after initiating a screen with Draymond Green forces him to cut to the basket and abandon the screen. Now tapping L1 after a pick and fade will result in a ghost screen which basically is a slip out of a pick and fade. This is a great counter if the help defense is too aggressive in containing the ball handler. So as you can see right here, I ask for a pick. And then I select the fade option by tapping R1 as you can see right there. And then I immediately tap L1 once again to ask the screener to slip that screen. And because it's a fade option, it is now converts into a ghost screen. And this is something that Steph and Clay do routinely because of how defenses react to that type of screening action. Now if you want to choose your screener, you can do this by tapping L1 to open the icon play calling menu. And then Instead of pressing any icon to select a play, hold the icon to request for a screen from that specific player. Now just like your standard pick and roll control using L1, you have access to your fades, your slips, your switching angles, and to select a ghost screen or a roll slip. So here tapping L1 will open the icon play calling menu. I want Clay to set the screen so I'm holding square to ask for that pick and roll. And then you have your different options out of the manual pick and roll control. You can tap L1 to slip which we do right here. We ask Clay to abandon that screen. Again tapping L1 will open the icon play calling menu and then we ask for a screen from Clay again. And then tap L1 once again in order to slip that screen. And here are a few clips of how I use this using the Warriors Freelance. So I use this to use a screen the screener action and in this case, we inverted the pick and roll having Dre as the ball handler and Steph as the screen setter. We can also do a ghost screen which forces pull to fade, forces defenders to react and collapse and then we have a wide open corner 3. We can also use the slip option. Instead of faking the fade option, we ask pull to slip towards the basket and that's an easy alley -oop. Next, let's take a look at another underrated tool, which are your receiver control options. 
So in the controller settings, go to your receiver control options. You have three different options. You have your standard receiver get open, which is by default. You have your pitch to handoff action, and you also have your full receiver control option. All right, let's start with the default action, which is the receiver control option. As you can see right here, by default, you'll have this activated in the controller settings menu. Okay, to do this, hold circle to get to your nearest teammate to cut to the basket, and then they will execute a flare cut to get open. Release circle at any point to pass their intended target, so your target will have that basketball icon right there, as you can see from Clay. Because of the denied defense, Clay will cut to the basket, force LeBron to commit, and then flare out in order to get a wide open jump shot. So same concept here with Jordan Poole and Draymond Green. I hold circle to get Jordan Poole to cut and then flare out to get wide open and receive the basket. Now I hold circle and I read the defense and instead of letting Steph flare out, I release circle to get that backdoor cut for an easy two. Now if I didn't release circle at this point right here, Steph would still have flared out but because we read the defense, we just used that backdoor cut to get an easy two points. So next out of receiver options is the dribble handoff or pitch pass. So hold circle to call the targeted player towards you for a handoff or a pitch pass. Now this also works like a reverse pick and roll. So here after a down screen for Jordan Poole, I hold circle and ask him to come towards me. By releasing circle, I pass Jordan Poole the ball. And then Draymond Green just basically screens the defender to get Jordan Poole a wide open jumper. So one thing I like to do out of the dribble handoff is to curl and attack downhill. Now as the defense collapses, we get Clay a wide open 3 point jump shot. Look at this action right here, it's almost like a staggered screen because the ball hander giving Jordan Poole the dribble handoff screens for his defender briefly to give Jordan Poole space to attack the basket. This action is especially dangerous when you get switches and confusion on the defense giving Steph a wide open 3. The last option is full receiver control which gives you more freedom to control your offensive player. So hold circle and hold a left stick in any direction to control your receiver, giving you freedom to direct them wherever you want to go by holding the left stick and moving them around. So here after holding circle and selecting Steph Curry, I hold the left stick up and towards the basket to force Steph to cut towards the basket. Now the challenge here is at times the player with the ball will also move around which makes it a little bit clunky. Now you now have the freedom to select whether you want your receiver to fade, curl, receive a handoff, or whatever type of action you would like. So here, I ask Clay to curl out of that screen from Draymond to get us towards the basket for an easy two. You can also mimic the dribble handoff option, just direct your player towards you and hand off the ball by releasing circle. You can also use full receiver to control to mimic the get open option. As you can see right here, I force Steph to cut and then I flare out of dribble handoff for a wide open three. So as you can see here, full receiver control gives you more freedom, it gives you options and more control instead of the handoff option or the get open option, but it's a little bit clunky and requires you getting used to the action. So the next tool that is very useful is icon passing, which is done by tapping R1 to open the icon pass option, and then press the icon of your player you want to pass to. So in this case right here, I like to use this out of freelances with multiple options. I have the option to pass to Steph if he cuts to the basket, or Jordan Poole as he cuts out of that brush screen. So here I don't pass to Steph because look at Patrick Beverly, he's inching towards helping off of Steph. That gives Poole enough space to catch the ball and then attack the closeout for an easy two point jump shot. And because I had the icon pass option, as you can see right here, off of that similar action, I instead choose to pass to Steph on the backdoor cut. As you can see right here, I have the option to pass to Steph or Clay depending on what the defense gives me. So there are actually more options out of icon passing to give you more freedom to get the ball to your intended target. As you can see right here, there's full receiver option and there's also an option for pass type. So icon full receiver control works similarly to your full receiver control option out of circle but now you have the freedom to choose your intended target. So again, start by tapping R1 and let's say I want to control Jordan Poole out of that screen. I start holding circle to control Jordan Poole and that lets that white line around Jordan Poole right there and then I hold the left stick towards the basket to force Jordan Poole to cut and curl towards the basket and then just release the icon to release the pass to your intended target. Now next, you can actually choose which type of pass you want to throw out of the icon pass option. You can throw a lob pass, a chest pass, or a bounce pass. To do so, just choose icon pass type in the icon pass options. Now, hold the icon of the intended receiver to make a lob pass, helping you avoid the defense's outstretched arms. So look here as Jordan Poole makes the right lob pass to Dante DiVincenzo out of that back cut. 
going through the outstretched arms of Thomas Bryant. So here it's another option out of the 21 delay freelance. DiVincenzo passes to Jordan Poole and then Green will screen for Dante DiVincenzo towards the basket. I tap R1 and then I hold X to give Dante DiVincenzo that perfect lob pass towards the basket. Now by default, a standard tap out of the icon out of your icon pass options will give you a chest pass which is the default icon pass option. Now my favorite option out of these icon pass options are actually your icon bounce pass which is done by double tapping the icon of your intended receiver. This is a great way to get passes out of tight angles and make sure that your passes are fast and zippy. And this is something that I use frequently out of the 21 delay option by giving the ball to the trailing big in Draymond Green. Steph will set a brush screen for Clay, but we use the icon bounce pass to lead Steph towards the basket. Now after double tapping X to make that bounce pass to Steph, I hold the left stick towards the basket in order to guide Steph to the basket using that icon lead pass option. As you can see right here, Steph's path is towards Clay Thompson to set that brush screen. But by double tapping X to execute a bounce pass and holding the left stick up and to the right towards the basket, we force Steph to cut towards the basket and that bounce pass is perfect. The lead pass option out of icon passes just gives you that extra bit of freedom to counter defenses depending on how they play you. So that's it. Those are the tools that I use in order to level up my freelance to go beyond the intended offense and actions out of your different freelance sets. This gives you different options to be creative and set different counters depending on how defenses play you, especially if your defenders are familiar with the freelance sets that you are using. And give this video a thumbs up if you want a deeper dive into the Warriors freelance and the 21 delay freelance because I showed you basically just the nuts and bolts of how to use these different techniques. But I also can do a deep dive into these freelances to show you how to be creative and what the standard options out of these freelances are. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give this a thumbs up. That lets me know whether you want me to do content like this. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thumbs up if this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.